My name is Danny. I'm a wildlife photographer and I share my adventures photographing wildlife. I want to share intimate stories about wild animals and this story is about the secretive Eurasian otter. I've travelled to the Shetland Islands, a group of a hundred or so islands. Shetland is the northernmost region of the United Kingdom. For a week I'll be following Bryden Thomason, a professional otter guide and photographer. Bryden has followed Shetland otters all his life and was deeply inspired by the first documentary on Shetland otters by Hugh Miles. And now he's invited me to Shetland to share my story getting to know these secretive animals. Getting close to otters takes careful field craft and lots of patience. And I've got a lot to learn from Bryden this week. Today is my first day on Shetland. I have to admit, I don't know a lot about Shetland. My first impressions are that Shetland is very remote, very windy and has some epic coastal landscapes. Shetland has this awesome Viking feel about it and I'm really excited to explore this raw and exposed landscape with an otter expert. Otters generally tend to be pretty shy animals. They're always alert, on the lookout for potential threats. One of their senses, particularly acute, is their, uh, their sense of smell. You can only really use sights where the wind is blowing in your face, taking your scent inland. That's really crucial. So judging the wind direction is the first, first step to walk on an otter shoreline. So this is an otter halt. There are two entrances or exits and at the outside is a latrine, so where they go for the toilet, because obviously they don't want to go for the toilet inside their home, so they go outside. Photographing otters is about perfect field craft. There's so many things we need to think about. Wind direction, which will impact where we are on the islands. The tide times, when we're going to be out looking for the otters. And of course, the weather. If it's too windy and stormy, I can't take photos. But if it's too still, the otters are going to hear us. Bryden had spotted a dog otter, which is another way of saying a male otter. Bryden told me what to do and where to be, and funnily enough, the otter went in exactly the perfect position. Otters are typically freshwater species, but the otters on Shetland feed in the sea, so they come onto land to rub the salt off their fur. The wind direction changed quite drastically, and so did the weather. We could hear an otter cub calling, and we managed to find it. But the weather conditions were so bad, 
I could hardly hold my camera still. So we decided to call it a day. Bryden had spotted two cubs sleeping and got us into position. The cubs began play fighting, meters in front of us. And they went up to their hulk, which is an otter's home. It's a place to sleep and rest. Bryden then spotted another otter on the beach. Mum. She can be recognised by her darker coat. Mum goes up to the halt and collects the cubs and they all go out to the beach. After some bonding and grooming time, it was time to go and hunt. Bryden quickly noticed that they were heading to the other side of the beach and mum had prey. We had minutes to get to them before they did. We were just on time. Although we are meters in front of this pup, she has no idea we're there. Their tiny eyes have evolved to see contrast in light, especially when hunting in murky waters. But they can't really see detail, so as long as they cannot see our silhouette, we stay quiet and still, and we're downwind. We just blur into the background. But a consequence of their poor eyesight is that the cubs get lost. And this cub has lost her mum. She gives up looking for mum and gets back to a piece of crab that's been left. Otter cubs like crab because they're quite easy to catch, but they're a little too crunchy and they lack nutrition. 
so this cub needs to learn how to hunt fish soon. She'll only be with mum for a few more months. The truth is otter cubs get lost all the time and they can get separated from mum for several hours. But we'll find out tomorrow if the otter cub finds her mum. Oh hi, I wanted to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video. Squarespace make it really easy for you to make a professional website. And I use Squarespace every day because I sell my calendars on there. And this photo actually made it into my wildlife calendar. And here is February. I sell my calendars on my online shop and let me quickly show you how I use Squarespace every day. I open up my orders and I've linked Squarespace to my shipping company and when I open Royal Mail, all of my orders are already there automatically from Squarespace. This feature has literally saved me so much time and it means I can still make videos. If you'd like to give Squarespace a go, head to squarespace.com slash Wild and you can save 10% off a domain or a new website with the code DannyConnorWild. Back to the video. After yesterday's success, we've decided to return to the same family. The wind direction is the same, so we've got a good chance of catching up with them today. And almost immediately, Bryden spots them hunting offshore and he gets us in the perfect position. And mum's got an octopus. She leaves it for the cub and goes back out to fish. And someone else shows up, the otter cub with a crunchy crab. I'm so pleased to get these shots of the otter cubs coming back with crab. Bryden tells me about the diet of the otters. They're incredibly well adapted animals. It's always it always amazes me how well you know, the, the fact that they can so you can be watching this beautiful, charismatic four-legged animal that all of a sudden goes from the from the land into the sea, foraging underwater, diving, catching fish for the seabed. That's really incredible. Fish definitely make the high the, the high majority of an otter's daily diet, and um, yeah, I mean on a, on a good foraging day, an otter could eat maybe up to a third of its own body weight. You know, an average um, full-grown mum, she might I mean she might weigh some way about six kilos. Um, so I mean you're talking about two kilos a day, and imagine for for her feeding her. Uh, provisioning our cubs we pray as well. Imagine the, the amount of energy they have to expend to catch enough for our cell and enough to, you know, to, to feed our cubs. It's a, it's a lot of energy burden in a day.
Mum and the otter cub then started grooming just metres in front of us. This really is a beautiful moment between two wild animals. Watching these two otters interact is so magical and truly touching and it just shows the intimate connection that these two animals have. There's something really, really special. The whole, the excitement of otters, watching them and spending time with them, but the whole build up and the anticipation of doing everything right taking your time, patience, reading all the signs, the wind direction, all the, all the factors that come into it. It's, a, it's an amazing experience, uh, very gratifying. But yeah, it's, it's imperative that you put, well, we always put them first. And as, 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 as an art guide, um, sort of field naturalist, that's a, worth, you know, first and foremost, that's, that's my job, is to make sure people watch otters responsibly and we always put them first. It's our last day today, and Bryden has taken me to a new location. But these trend points are they're like a, they're, they're authors made to communicate. Each author in the leaves a leaves a mark. It's here. And if you, as soon as you put the human scent on, you bare hands. That's contaminated. So it's the sort of so an author would come to it, and that sort of spit smell. Bryden tells me about the importance of fresh water for otters. Access to fresh water for coastal living otters is almost as crucial as, um, as well, as, as prey even, because without regularly bathing in, in the fresh water, the salt water crystallises in their fur and that starts to break down one of their major defences against the, the cold water temperatures. So it's absolutely crucial that they have daily access to fresh water and are able to groom the salt water off of their, off of their pelts. Okay, so Bryden has just spotted a mother otter and she has cub, so we're about to run along the coast, being downwind and see if we can get close to these otters. Bryden kindly carries both our tripods because it's not easy trying to walk on slippery seaweed, especially when he's just spotted a family of otters. It doesn't matter how much you know a species and take the time to learn about them and watch their behavior. Sometimes what you want to happen just doesn't happen. And this family of otters slept in front of us for two hours. And yet, watching them snuggle together asleep on the shore so peacefully was the perfect end to our shoot. Leaving them unaware we were even there and they were still asleep under the setting sun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our adventure in Shetland, finding the otters. I'd never really seen otters, so this was the first time photographing them and understanding their behavior and their ecology. Thank you to Bryden who took us out there. And if you're interested in going on an otter tour or photographing seabirds up in Shetland, the details for Shetland Nature and Bryden are in the description. So have a look at the website and maybe book a trip in Shetland. Remember, my wildlife calendar is linked in the description that features an otter photo. Both the squirrel and wildlife calendar help save the squirrel forest. So you have an option or maybe you want both. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye.